Hello, welcome to this recording of uh, my solution for day 24 of Advent of Code 2023. Well, this was one of the more interesting days, a uh, very hard day, especially part two. And I've seen a lot of solutions, uh, people using symbolic math libraries, uh, basically quote unquote cheating. <laughs> uh, but I, found, I think I found the right solution, uh, which reuses uh, a lot of the logic from part one. And I wanted to share this uh, solution uh, uh, because of that. It was also really interesting and it was, uh, it was really nice uh, to come to this conclusion. It took me a while. Okay, let's go uh, through, the, through this, um, the problem first. So this puzzle is about hailstones. Uh, their initial positions and speeds are given and they basically travel along linear paths. Uh, some of those paths will intersect, not necessarily at the same time. Um, That's for part one. And we need to find all such intersections um, that happen in future time and within a certain bounding box. Now what we can do for that is try to write all paths in the form AX plus BY plus C, which is uh, the general form of a line equation in 2D. And if we do that, we can solve this equation on both sides. So X and Y need to be equal for two pairs of hailstones. Um, so when we do that, we can um, manipulate the two equations a little bit such that we can eliminate Y, for example, in this case. I, I multiplied the top equation by B2 and the bottom equation by B1. Then we subtract, subtract the equations from each other and then we can uh, get an equation for X, which is of this form. Uh, and we need to note that the denominator can never be zero because if it is, then the lines are parallel and there is no solution. Now, a lot of people found this, this way of doing it, uh, basically linear algebra to solve it. If you do it like that, um, you can basically, for part one, process all pairs of stones. And if you find the intersection within the valid range, uh, you can increment your answer, answer count, and, and that's it. Now I extracted this method, which also checks for uh, positive time. And that's basically, uh, you can determine that by checking the sign of the velocity and the position increment, because they need to be exactly the same. If it were not, uh, then you would have to travel backwards in time to, to, uh, to come to the point of uh, collision. Um, so that's basically part one. Now you already see, I have some spoiler here for part two. So uh, this method has the possibility to add a delta velocity to each stone. So what's the problem for part two? <clears throat> part two specifies that there's a rock which will eventually collide with every hillstone. So that, that means that there's an intersection at some point in time um, not only intersection, but the time also matches between the hillstone and the rock. Now the key insight here is that we can uh, turn this problem around. Basically we can assume the rock being stationary by instead of giving the rock a speed v, giving every hillstone a speed um, or a speed increment of minus v because it doesn't matter if the rock is moving or if the hillstones are moving uh, because of the principle of relativity. And if we keep the rock stationary, then the problem becomes a lot easier to solve because we can just reuse uh, the mechanism from part one. If the rock is stationary and all hillstones collide with the rock at some point in time, that would mean that the pairs of hillstones with modified velocities, of course, have intersecting paths. So if we just um, process all pairs of hailstones as we did in part one, there should be uh, an intersection of those paths with 
a certain velocity uh, increment, of course. So the task is to find this velocity increment. Now, to find this velocity increment, we can inspect the input. And if we do that, we, we see that our velocities are not that big. So most velocities of our input are pretty small, actually. I will put my input here. This is the wrong one. So all velocities are maybe the biggest is like 400. I'm not sure. Maybe 500. But this, we should be able to brute force this in 2D. Like if we have two loops of minus 1000 to plus 1000, for example, we can increment or, hand or um, check all velocities and see if there's a solution. Now the other keys inside we can make is that we don't need to do this in 3D but we can just use a projection, three different projections basically in 2D, just like we did for part one. So we can project, uh, get rid of the Z axis as we did for the first part and only process X and Y. We can do the same by getting rid of the X axis and process, pr process Y and Z. And we can get rid of the, um, what is it? The Y axis and process X and Z. Now, if you do this, uh, process the projections, eventually they should come to the same conclusion and find the same point. In fact, we only need to do two projections, but I did three anyway. Um, so basically what, what this does, uh, we do uh, this, this projects the z-axis, so we get rid of the z-axis. This projects the x-axis, so we get rid of it and this, uh, the y-axis. These three results need to be in line. So I have some checks here that, uh, um, that check whether that's actually the case. And if these come to the same conclusion, then you actually found your point. So the code to find uh, this point is like I said, brute forcing over 2D values of velocity increments and adding those to the stones. And then we, we reuse the same mechanism from part one. We just give them a delta velocity. Now, if we found mounting, uh, matching positions, we increment our result count here, and we add the result uh, to a set of coordinates. And because these matching positions need to line up, which is, they need to line up at the position of our rock, the result count at the end should be exactly one. Uh, sorry, the position count should be exactly one and our result count should be a lot bigger than one. Uh, here I took a minimum of five. You can, it, can be, it, it can be even the stone count, of course, because all stones need to intersect at that position eventually. But the likelihood of, of more than five is already very small, so I just um, took a shortcut here because this already gives a single result. Well, basically, if you do this, you will find exactly the point, the one and only point that uh, that matches uh, all these stones. And if I run this, you can also see that it runs within a second or something like that. So I was really satisfied of finding the solution. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye bye.